Minister, a warm welcome, please, for Raul Fernandez and Gericoitz Garcia. Welcome. Welcome, yep. gentlemen. Thank you, man. Um, all right. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Apologies for these initial uh, issues. Um, yeah, my name is Gary Garcia. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction of uh, the IAG Group and IAG GBS, which is the company Raul and myself belong to. Um, IAG GBS is part of, uh, of the IAG Group. Um, I will uh, tell you a bit more about it in the next slide. Um, all right, so um, IAG um, has a vision of becoming the um, uh, the leading uh, group of airlines uh, uh, across the world, and to do so is uh, preparing a um, a platform for different operating companies to to work on on it. So the idea is to maximize in the uh, the, the sustainable uh, value to our stakeholders and customers. Uh, it started in uh, 2011, and uh, there were uh, there were joining leading uh, airlines uh, from from Ireland, from the UK, from Spain, and uh, it conglomerates uh, different type of airlines across the same group. So there are uh, two full service carriers, uh, which are Iberia and British Airways. There are also two value service carriers, like uh, Aer Lingus and uh, Iberia Express. And finally, there are also low-cost carriers, such as uh, Vueling and Level. Level actually was created by AG in 2017, uh, while the other companies were uh, either creating the group or being acquired later on. And um, the, the difference with Level is, this, is that it's a uh, low-cost uh, company that offers transatlantic flights to many destinations, uh, starting from Barcelona and, and Paris. Then, um, as you have probably seen in the press, uh, we are now in the process to publicly uh, buy uh, another airline, which is uh, Air Europa, and that will give us also more presence in the Madrid hub. So. Um, what, what we are uh, building in IAG is a platform for these different, uh, diff different operating companies to coexist uh, and find the synergies between them. So the, the platform is formed by uh, other operating companies supporting those businesses, which include IAG Cargo for uh, goods trans transportation, then um, IAG GBS, which is the one that provides group IT services, procurement, and financial services. And um, finally, we have Avios, which is the, um, uh, let's say, the, the loyalty uh, aspect of, uh, of the group. Um, in terms of um, the, the vision, uh, like becoming the, the world leading airline and, and creating this sustainable value. Um, we believe that we are well positioned to, uh, to offer this, this value because um, even if, if we are working on a very competitive and, and fast paced environment, we do have the, the right uh, basis for, for creating that. We believe that um, one fit doesn't fit all so that's why we are quite diverse in terms of uh, the, the different businesses that are part of the group. But we also um, believe that um, because they are different, we can also offer uh, unrivaled customer proposition across the, the different segments of, uh, of the travel uh, industry. Um, OK. Um, so here you can see the, the IAG interrogated platform, which is composed of uh, cargo, avios, GBS, and, and so on, that provide these uh, services to, to the different companies. Um, the, the idea is to allow this integrated platform to provide simplicity and, and to become more efficient, um, and, and then let the, the different operating companies to be different, to have their own targets, and um, in the end to, 
to provide different, different type of value to different type of customers. Uh, now going a bit more into Group IT. Group IT is uh, part of IGGBS, so together with the financial services um, and uh, group procurement, we form this uh, global business services group. We do have a number of challenges in, in Group IT uh, that we need to address because of the nature of, of the group. Um, for instance, there is a very uh, heterogeneous um, legacy landscape that we need to address. Together with that, uh, there are security issues, um, there are network uh, challenges uh, due to connectivity of, of different, different locations um, associated to the logistics. Um, obviously, there are different business alignments. They, uh, the, the, the different businesses do have different visions and therefore different cultures that we will need to address from a common uh, perspective in, in IT. The idea of IT is to offer a plug and play capability um, and this serves as a potential uh, platform, let's say, for even for future acquisitions so that we can uh, integrate and find the, the right synergies uh, underneath. Um, so what we are doing in, in IT with this plug and play model is to really understand our RCs, uh, our to be where we want to be, uh, how can we standardize and uh, to, to which level we can get those synergies, and then uh, define the associated roadmap and, and the strategy, of course, on, on how to go from A to B. Then, um, yeah, uh, in, in terms of what are the enablers to be able to do this, uh, one of the enablers is the agile transformation that we are uh, now presenting, and one of the samples is uh, the Iberia.com example, that, that Raul will go a bit more in depth. Uh, another very good example of, of enablers is actually the Open Group as a platform and the, um, uh, the Commercial Aviation Workgroup, where we are uh, aiming to develop much further the, um, uh, the Commercial Aviation Reference Framework, which will serve as a base for, for our IT and architecture functions. Then, um, in terms of agile working, well, you know, um, pretty much the, the idea of becoming agile, so uh, the organizations need to be more responsive, more effective, they need to be more, more efficient as well. Uh, there are a number of challenges that typically the, the different organizations face. Uh, they include specifically the, the culture and, and mindset change. And that is uh, something that uh, we also struggled, especially at the beginning, and we have been uh, evolving on that. So yeah, the, the use case will probably go a bit more deeper in, in, into that point. Um, in the end, what we found out is that we uh, need to embrace uh, the Agile agenda and uh, keep still the, uh, some parts of the more traditional way of doing IT and architecture, but we will have to evolve in, in some areas, and we have already started doing so. Um, the, in order to do this, the role of the architecture that we know traditionally uh, needs to evolve. Um, there are some aspects where this, this is more necessary than others. Um, primarily, we, we as architects need to be closer to the uh, business owners. Uh, we have to be co-creating and be co-located with them, do a lot of um, whiteboarding with them, understand the, the issues and evolve with the, with the business requirements. Then there is a, a necessity also for simplifying the documentation that we have and one very good thing to do so is to uh, choosing the right tools. Uh, in, in order to not having to put extra effort on the more uh, bureaucratic side of, of things. So just produce what is uh, absolutely relevant for, um, for the business and, and actually within IT. The concepts that we are uh, now a bit more familiar with um, and, and the aspects of architecture that need to, to change more, let's say, is uh, rather than 
trying to boil the, boil the ocean and create a completely perfect architecture from the beginning, we should start more from a minimum viable architecture. Uh, this means that, um, well, starting from the strategy and from a very high level vision of what we need to achieve, then we uh, have to smartly partition the architecture to find the right level of uh, depth and, and breadth of, of the different uh, initiatives and then focus on the minimum viable architecture for each of those initiatives rather than trying to create the whole thing from the beginning. Then the concept of continuous architecture refactoring um, is also, uh, as uh, we were uh, hearing before, uh, making the architecture more agile. So we don't need to adhere to a very strict and uh, difficult to change um, this architecture or solutions, but uh, starting from principles, starting from, from strategy, we can uh, evolve that architecture as, w as the requirements evolve or the technology underpinning those uh, solutions or requirements are evolving as well. In terms of digital transformation, um, we want the, the teams to be uh, working with new technologies. Um, we are exploring the new technologies. We are applying them and see how they work. Uh, proof concepts and small projects initially, starting small and then growing on them. Things like, well, technologies that uh, a couple of years ago were uh, radically new, now they are getting more uh, let's say, uh, adopted by, by all the teams, but there are still a lot of opportunities that, that can be explored in areas like artificial intelligence, blockchain, you name it, all, all these new technologies that, <coughs> that we work with. Uh, finally, but not uh, less important, is the, uh, the architecture governance. In the traditional um, way, let's say, the, the architecture governance is a bit too rigid and um, it, it, it needs to be a bit more fluid when we speak about Agile. So uh, to me, the, um, uh, the key figure is the solution architect in this case that can flex uh, the day-to-day -day work that is being done in the, um, in the squads, in, in within the teams that are working in, in the Agile delivery. Uh, and the, let's say, enterprise architecture level, where we have the strategy, the principles, the, the, the technology guidelines. So the um, solution architect can work with each of the squads, uh, understand what are the needs for, for solutions and architectures to evolve, and communicate that back to, to the enterprise architecture. We will see how these principles are uh, becoming a reality with uh, now the, the use case that Raul is going to present for IBL.com. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Raul Fernandez, the portfolio manager of IBL.com, as, as they. Okay, sorry. And I'm gonna, the case study that I'm going to introduce or present today is about uh, the roadmap of the agile adoption of Iberia.com. When I entered in, in, the, in the company three years ago, uh, the, the process, the methodology they, they were using was very traditional. And one of the missions they, uh, they gave me is to start doing the transformation with all the teams that are building the Iberia.com platform. What is Iberia.com? There are two different angles to see what is Iberia.com. One is a platform, it's a technological platform, a collection of microservices, a front application, a, the front of the, of the uh, mobile apps, uh, but also other legacy applications that are the core of the company, like the ticketing system or, ticketing system or uh, the account, uh, revenue accounting that this platform is using as well and they are belonging to other uh, teams, other areas of Iberia.com, and sometimes we have to implement things and we have dependencies that, uh, about a feature that they have to implement in their system. And this platform also is using third-party services like Amadeus or other, other, other services. So this is Iberia.com, is a technological platform. But also Iberia.com is a product from the business point of view, is a product. And as a product, there are different businesses in Iberia 
that want to spend money to do chains in the application because they, uh, those chains are going to bring with revenue. So we have several businesses and one technological platform. Uh, three years ago, the situation was very different to, to nowadays. And, and we have like a different businesses trying to touch the same platform. The businesses were not aligned each other. So whenever you start implementing things, you start seeing conflict in the, in the implementation. So there were a misalignment be between businesses. At that time, also, we, ha we, we, we see we have another, another big problem with business, is the priorities. Priorities were three types of priorities, high, medium, and level, high, medium, and low. Uh, what happened? 80% of the project were high priority and 20 medium. If you as IT has mm, a lot of projects with a high priority, the, the one that is deciding which project is going to be the first to implement is IT. And that's the, ba the bad direction because we are losing the time to market to start uh, to start working with a project that has most impact in business. So at some, at some point, we have to move that responsibility to business and say, we don't want to, we, we cannot work with only three levels of priority. The backlog has to be from one to N. And we can pick up the projects from the, from, from the top of the backlog. Another problem that we had at that time is the visibility. So, so all the engineers in Iberia.com were working in, in, in tasks to, to implement features, but they, they didn't know the business strategy. Uh, if they didn't know the business strategy, you cannot uh, collect any, uh, you cannot pretend that the team is proactive and the team uh, can take decisions in the right direction because they don't know the business strategy. And we are working, we are not a technological company. We are, we are selling tickets. And, and our, our, our target is the user. We, uh, and there are another, another problem that is that business didn't know or didn't understand how uh, IT was working. Because we were like a two different things. Business asking things and IT uh, implementing them. But we were not working as a team. Another problem was the dependencies. You had dependencies with another systems that um, are working, are still working in, in traditional technologies, traditional methodologies, and their, their speed of implementation is, uh, is not as fast as an agile teams. So if you have dependencies, you have to wait and what was happening at that time is that because business was pressing, <laughs> was putting a lot of pressure in some of the projects because they were very urgent, if this project has a dependency in a third party, you cannot start implementing on uh, that project until the third party finishes the dependency. Because if you do that, then you have implementation that is already done, but is not ready to put in production. If it is not ready to put in production, why you don't work in other things that you can put in production and get the time to market? Another problem is the knowledge. There were like a few people with a lot of knowledge. Uh, Iberia is a very old company. A few people with a lot of knowledge and many people depending on them. Uh, so we, we have to distribute that knowledge in all the people. Otherwise, the dependency to do something is very big and also the quality. At that time, we had a very monolithic application. You put, change something here, and then you break something in other, in, in other part. Of course, we have done a transformation project, and now we convert all that, that monolithic application in a microservice uh, uh, platform. So what we did at the beginning, Agile goes about working with things working with people. So, and at the beginning, we didn't say 
to anybody that we want to transform to Agile. We just starting to work with the people, with the team. Uh, and I remember the environment was a very difficult one because there were like a different providers working, uh, delivering projects, and when they put the project in the production, they generate a lot of bugs, and all the providers were blaming each other. Uh, so, so one of the things is you have to create a good environment, and a good environment that is focused in solutions. And everybody is working in a solution, not complaining, not blaming each other. So we started to do like a, a round of uh, retrospective meetings uh, in which we talk about the impediments that the people had uh, doing their job. What are the impediments that you have? What we can do? And then we came with a series of actions. In those meetings, nobody can complain, nobody can blame each other. Uh, everybody, the laptops, please close the laptop, and if you have a mo mobile call, go outside. We are gonna work together in a solution. And it's amazing, in two, mo two months doing that every week, uh, the, the attitude of the people changed because you put all the people to work in a solution together. And then you gave, you gave them like a possible solution to the, to the, to the problems. And then you try to influence, uh, to influence uh, in, to them to give them the good values to create like a base in which you can work in Agile. Especially be focused on the customer, and be out or, and the auto-organization. You have to delegate in teams. You cannot have, you, you are gonna, at that time, we were about to remove the project manager role. So team has to be able to auto-organize, and teams has to be able to assume the responsibility as a team. And that is difficult. And I will tell you. Um, so we, we have a good uh, success environment after two months in the people. And then we started to work together, to keep working together every week to define what will be the model that we would like to work. We are going to try to do the model uh, scalable for, for, for all of us that we would like to, uh, to work. And, and we did that with the uh, development team, with the engineers, but also with the business people. Because the challenge was stop having two different things, business and IT. And IT. The challenge was you are the product, we are IT, Hierarchically, you are in the same position, but you are doing different roles. But for doing different roles and with the common target that is the, the user, we have to be able to work together. How is the best model to work together? Then we put, I put everybody to, uh, in long sessions on Fridays, I remember, and, and to, to define that model. It was a difficult difficult process, but then people start contributing with ideas. And they are the, the people that are going to implement the things. So they are the people that knows much, be knows much better what is the best model for Iberia. Much better that if a external consul consultants comes to Iberia and say, this is the model, try to follow. No, we are gonna create, because if they created the model, if they created the model because they did it, they are gonna follow. They are not gonna leave that like a, an imposition. They are gonna leave la, that like a, a democratic act uh, a cons uh, that everybody agree. And they have to do what the, the team is agreeing. Okay, so we create the model. We spend like a several months. Sorry. It's the motion motion to tell. <laughs> okay, so we, we spent like a, 
several months trying to define the, the, the model. Can, can you hear me? Sí. Trying to define the model. And in January this year, this year uh, when that the model was defined and agreed in all the teams, then I dissolved all the teams in Iberia.com, 130 people. I dissolved all the teams, and in the act of one day, uh, in an auto-organized uh, meeting, everybody choose when he wants to work. They already know the, the model, so, so with the model you have a collection of rules. You, you can have, for example, for this model, we are gonna have uh, um, development teams that can, uh, has to be full stack. So every development team has to have all the profiles that you need to deliver something in production. Service uh, backend developers, front end developers, uh, quality assurance, um, um, another different technology like a experts in the content management system. So you have a team that can implement something and put in production. Uh, they already know that there were cells, that I, will, I will explain later, later on, that are, uh, every cell is formed by one product owner, one business analyst, one UX, one UI. So we draw the template and everybody select when they want it to work. And after that, we started around to uh, find the team agreements to start the new way of working. And we implemented this. We have been working this, this year with that model. And, and now we are in a, in a position in that we found several things that we need to, to improve uh, because Okay, this slide is not complete. Okay, um, because we rea we realize that the culture is very difficult to change. It's the most difficult thing when you are trying a transformation on Fajail. Uh, you can you can set the ceremonies, you can set the framework, but the culture, the mindset, is still old. So now we have to do a second round of transformation. So what is the model that we define? It define it a model, a three-level model. At the top level, well, it's not the top because it's not hierarchical. The center of the of, of the model is the core. In the core are are all the stakeholders that are that has interest in Iberia.com, that has money, and they need to do change in Iberia.com. And at this level, what we do is try to is talk about the things that are cross. If you have a project that are touching two different businesses, uh, you have to make sure that the priority for that business is the same that this one, otherwise you will not be able to, to deliver because you have a dependency. So we try to uh, figure out what are the dependencies uh, and resolve conflicts. In that, in that, at that level, we have the, architect, the solution architect of Iberia involved because the solution architect at this level has to try to identify what are the dependencies with other systems. Because as soon as you identify dependencies, you can start working on, that, on, on those dependencies. You start talking with other parties to they planify the work and, and have that work ready when you start implementing. Uh, then we have a second level. Uh, in, uh, you will see the squads, and every squad has two, two different levels. In the, in the left hand side, you have the cells and the development team. The cell is formed by the product owner, business analyst, US and UI. What they are doing is try to pick up the requirement at very high level that are created in the, in the core and, and do a fine grain and the input is an initiative, business initiative, and their output is a use backlog with different user stories. A user story is a requirement that is very well defined from the functional point of view, but with enough information 
for a developer to be able to start to implement. So, and in, in our case, we include the UX and the UI as part of the, of the requirements. And every cell uh, can feed one or several uh, development teams. So, it's, the cell is like a, in the traditional Scrum, the product owner, and the team, the development team, is the, the development team. The development team is a full stack team with the different technology from apps, mobile apps, Angular, uh, backend developers, uh, was center site, and every team also has a member that is that belongs to the archi chapter architect, the uh, chapter architecture. So, so the chapter architecture is like a if I am a developer that I like architecture. I am architecture that I am working here in the development team. I like architecture. That's my focus, my, my passion. So what they do is they create a community. So every development team has a, has a member of the chapter architecture. They create a community about architecture. So they can, they can share things about that practice. They can be in contact with the solution architect and the enterprise architect. They can understand what are the principles of the architecture in, in, in IAG, and they can try to, uh, to conscientiate to the other people in the team how things has to be done. And they can identify also inside of the, of the team that if we have to develop this functionality that has an implication in architecture, then I have to raise, raise a flag and say to the solution architect, okay? So this is the model, and, the, uh, uh, and then this is some photographs about the act when we created that model in an out-organization fashion. Uh, and on a other thing that we incorporated to the model is a, is a ceremony that is the town hall meeting. Uh, we, we, we have a town hall every quarter, at the beginning of the quarter, and all the, the, the target of this town hall is to understand the business strategy for this quarter, what this business wanting to do in the, in the application. Uh, so every business manager goes there and, and, and tell to all the people, when I say all the people, they say 160 people all together. And business managers come and they tell us uh, the, the business strategy the, the sales, the product owners, tell also uh, the, the plan aligned with the business strategy. And then all the people together uh, with, a, with, a plan that, um, with a plan that they have about the implementation for, the, for the, this quarter, start talking each other about dependencies. So, uh, so after those sessions of explaining a strategy, so in, in, in a big room, we have different positions for different squads, and all, all the people go through, through the different squads, and the product owner tell them in detail what is our plan for this quarter. And if you are, for example, someone for the ticketing systems and goes there, and then they tell them T tell you things, maybe you say, okay, if you want to do that, I have to do some change, because you will find that if, if you try to do this, this parameter is not in our, in our process. So then we have to do things. So then you keep a posit, and then you have something to integrate as a ticketed system in your, in your plan. So the, the, the target of this town hall meeting is try to manage all the dependencies we have with the people in front of you, talking about the things we are gonna do. And talking, interacting with people is much more powerful than if we do this plan, this three months plan, based in emails or, or other kind of remote communication. It's much more powerful. 
and <clears throat> and also and also we found that this kind of meetings because all the people is together and then you can you, you, you can know other people that is working in another areas that maybe you never you never see in the in the day a day uh, create an, a lot of synergies and a lot of motivation and it's it's, uh, it's amazing that the last for for, for the last uh, Sorry, we are, we are finishing the time. It's, 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 it's amazing the result that that, uh, that meeting has. So basically, I'm finishing the conversation. The, the rest of the points are key learning that we had in this first uh, phase that you can read in the, in, the, in the PPTs. And then we are starting to work in the next level uh, of um, change that we need to, to improve uh, in, the, in the agile transformation. Okay. Thank you. Please have a seat, Raul. We'll go through a few questions. Thank you very much for that. Um, I think you, in your, uh, you skipped over some of the uh, key learnings um, in the interest of time. I think mm -hmm. one of them might answer the first question, which was um, we heard earlier about a bimodal architecture approach, is that how you would describe uh, the situation in IAG? Bimodal architecture bimodal approach. Bimodal, two-speed or, or multi-speed? Two different speeds. So, uh, actually, we have like a three different levels. It is much more three levels than, than, than two. Uh, we have an architecture at the, at the top level that we discuss uh, when, uh, when we have the core meeting, when all the stakeholders are together, and then we see the impact that the the new functionality will have in the in the architecture, and then you miss that impact and the requirement that then we will have to change those pieces of software according with the uh, principles of the architecture, the general principles. And another level is in the in the cells when you are landing when when you are refining the requirements then you find that there are some things also that are impacting that you cannot see at the, at the high level. Mm -hmm. uh, so architectures have uh, also uh, meetings every two months with the, all the cells, and they are explaining what is going to be the backlog for the, for the two or three uh, sprints, uh, coming sprints. And, and so you can identify also other uh, change that you have to, to do. And also might happen, no, it's not uh, the regular, that when you are implementing in the, in the Scrum, you find some other implications. OK, okay thank you. Uh, you mentioned user stories. Uh, who creates those in your organization? User stories. Mm. The user stories are created uh, between the product owner and the business analyst. The differences in the, between, in the product owner and business analyst is not so much. In our case, it's just legacy. Because at the beginning, when we started to, to work, a uh, product owner work, were in the, in the business area, and the business analysts were, and the product owner were in the business areas, and the requirement was for, for IT were just one sentence. Uh, so we, 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 we needed to, to hire like a business analyst to try to translate that one sentence in something meaningful for the, for the developers. But now, nowadays that we have been working with a product owner and business analyst a long time and they know each other and they know how the other guy is working as well, so there is a good synchronization and so far both of them are business uh, product owners. But the product owner per se is the responsible to, to create that uh, user stories. Thank you. Um, I'll combine two questions into one. Um, when you got the um, teams together in the early stages, you mentioned the first two months, um, was that face-to-face -face is the first part of the question. And secondly, you then talk about quarterly meetings. Are they good enough or should they be more frequent, do you think? Mm, the second part, the core meetings. Second part, so you talked about quarterly meetings, getting people together. Uh, is that? Do you think that is regular enough, or should it be more regular than quarterly? Okay, yeah. Let me explain. 
So, so, the, so the, the first phase, the phase zero, in which we have this retrospective meeting, is very important to have that uh, retrospective meeting face to face. Because, because interaction is much more powerful than email, even much more powerful than when you are in remote. So if you can do presencial, it's much better. Right. So, so the, there is a difference between the town hall meetings and the, and the core. No? The core meeting in which all the stakeholders are together happen every, every Friday. So, so every Friday, we are discussing the things that are cross, things that are um, high level, and the stakeholder has a very good knowledge about how other things are, uh, are going. Uh, the, the, the town hall meetings happens every, every, every quarter. It's enough. It's, 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 a, it's a lot of, so imagine uh, 130 people in, in, in a meeting during, during a whole day. It's a very expensive meeting. Mm. Uh, in, and it's not because it's, it's expensive. It's, it's, it's enough because at that time you can plan the three, the three months, the three coming months very, very well. And if you have any issue during the plan, because you see the other guy that is implicated in your project, you can go to, 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 his, uh, to, to his place and ask the, the, the questions. And so far, it's, it's enough and it's a very powerful meeting. Okay. Um, one for you, maybe, Gary, um, Gary, uh, Gary Quitz. What do you think of the, minimum, uh, of the term minimum viable architecture? Um, it seems unarchitectural. The least amount of architecture possible doesn't sound like a good idea. What do you think? Um, I think that makes sense. Um, actually, it, it is within the concept of, of TOCA itself. Mm. So when we do the ADM, right, um, we can choose what the scope of the ADM is, and that allows us to focus on the really the, the, the partition of the architecture that we want to resolve at a very specific point in time and for a very specific initiative. So. Um, as, as I mentioned before, uh, rather than trying to create the architecture for everything, it is better to just um, well do a preliminary phase to identify things like the, the principles, um, the strategies, and so on. And, and from that perspective, um, and with an architecture vision, probably for the whole lot, then focus on developing the architecture for specific necessities. Uh, primarily because those architectures and solutions are going to evolve with the time in an agile world. So sometimes it's uh, also a waste of time if you want to resolve everything at the beginning, knowing that parts of it are not going to be used or are going to change. Right. Okay. And we are, we are out of time, but, but one more question because I'm interested in hearing the answer. Um, uh, what does IAG particularly hope to gain out of participation in the commercial aviation work group? So the principal focus, I believe, is the uh, reference architecture. Mm -hmm. I think that will be uh, one of the enablers for, for Group IT in, in the end. That will provide us with the basement, let's say, for uh, the different domain viewpoints, uh, data architecture, applications, business architecture. So that will um, streamline quite a lot the, the, the ADM cycle in the end. So how to produce the architectures and the solutions to make it more, much more efficient, to use less resources, and to be able to deliver in less time, and finally to become more agile. Right, and it, it's, it's the latest example of, of what we're doing in the Open Group in other industries as well, is you know, going to that reference architecture level and what it means for your, for your particular industry. So Excellent. we'll leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you both very much, Raul and Gary Klitz. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.